So today in Ultimate Team, EA dropped the December Bundesliga Player of the Month and it is an 86 rated Lars Stindl who comes with some really nice shooting of 89, really good passing of 86, good dribbling of 86 but um, he also comes with 67 pace which I think we all know is going to be an instant negative for this card but nonetheless we're going to try this item out today. If you need some coins to improve your ultimate team then check out my sponsor, there's a link to do so in the description, igvault.com and if you use the code Kieran you'll get yourself a nice discount but if you use the code Kieran T-O-T-Y you'll get yourself an even bigger discount throughout the team of the year promo. So to get this guy you do have to complete two different SVCs, you have to submit an 82 rated squad with an inform and an 83 rated squad with a Bundesliga player so uh, with all things considered he does not come cheap at all, I believe that comes to around 50,000 coins. So in the comments below, I would love to hear from you guys. Do you think this card is good value at 50k or not? I get the sense that most people are going to say no, especially because of this guy's pace. So this is the team we're going to be using Stindl in. Up top we have Werner and Voland. I'm aware they're not on full chem, but they will do the job for us. What's important is that Stindl is on the maximum 10 chemistry, and apparently we cannot actually have a look at his in-game stats right now because of whatever reason. I'm hoping when I get into a game I can just look at his in-game stats and uh, hopefully that will be fine. Now obviously we're not going to use him with a uh, you know basic chem style because he's definitely going to need a pace boost so you know what we're just going to bang a hunter on him and uh, you know what actually catalyst might be a bit better. In fact yeah we'll go for catalyst that makes more sense. Gets the pace boost and the passing boost and um, which will benefit him as a cam. So chem style applied let's get into a game hopefully check out the stats as well in game and also obviously test this item out. Well ignore literally everything I've just said because apparently Stindle is a game breaking card. Okay, so it's just gone past 4pm and now, for some reason, we can finally see his stats. Like, the card came out around quarter past 3 UK time, uh, the SBC did anyway, but um, you just couldn't see his stats for 45 minutes for whatever reason. You couldn't get into games with him previously either. Anyway, you can now, so let's do this. 4 star, 4 star, very good to see. Medium, medium work rates, also nice on a cam. In terms of traits, finesse shot and outside the foot shot, all good there. And in terms of in-game stats, no surprise, there's some absolutely brilliant ones. The shooting column for an attacking mid is ridiculously good. 87 finishing, 91 shot power, 89 long shots and 91 tap positioning. Brilliant, brilliant stats. Passing for the most part is pretty solid too. 93 vision and 90 shot passing being the highlights. And the dribbling, aside from the agility, is great as well. 91 reactions, 90 ball control and 90 composure being the standouts there. But obviously we know he lacks pace and we can see now that he lacks agility as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this guy feels when in possession of the football. Uh, finally, physically, how are we looking? Um, nice combination of strength and aggression, which is good to see. Stamina of 82 is alright, but nothing too stand out. Not horrific, but also not great for a cam. And then the jumping is okay, I guess, for someone who is 5 foot 11. So uh, all in all, from a technical point of view, the card looks decent. It really does, but... The pace and the agility are going to be a factor. We, we just know this because we, we've been playing this game for a few months now. We know how it works. And uh, yeah, let's just get into some games and let's see how impactful those stats are. Okay, so in our first outing with Stindo, we're up against a 94 rated in for Messi. And also in the back line, he's got Van Dijk and Kleber. It's, uh, it's a very nice team. It's a very good back line as well. And uh, I'm expecting a tough game in this one. Here we go then. Stindle's first touch of the ball. It's going to be a nice through ball into the path of Voland, who's in a bit of space, but Kunde makes a really good sliding challenge there. Here is Stindle once more, this time with the outside pass to Kingsley Coman, who's now got a chance to make his way inside. There, into the path of Stindle, who has a chance to equalise, and he takes full advantage. Good off the ball run there, in support of his forwards. And uh, we've got ourselves a goal back. The path of Stindle. He's looking for the run of Team of Werner and he finds him. Or Kunde once again with another sliding challenge, but this time makes the foul. Got ourselves a penalty now. Stindl steps up to take it and he goes down the middle and he ties his level at three goals apiece. And there is the whistle for half time. So uh, at the break, we've actually gone in with a 4 3 lead despite being 3 1 down at one point in this game. His attack is just so fast, it's really doing some damage. Now in the second half, we're actually going to switch to the 4-2-3-1 formation. And we're going to do that because Stindl is dropping back quite a bit in the 4-1-2-1-2. So uh, yeah, I want him to be, you know, the main man. So we're going to switch to the 4-2-3-1 and hopefully he can be exactly that in that role. Goretzka into the path of Mbappe. Mbappe's found Stindl who's found some open space. We're going to go for the near post and it's unfortunately not a good decision. He's been moving his keeper a lot this game so that's why I did that. But uh, 
The break now, Mbappe puts the ball into Stindl. We know he's moving his keeper in this game, so we're going to take our time and we're going to put the ball in the back of the net. And we now have a comfortable lead in a game which I really didn't think we would have when we were 3-1 down just a short time ago. Chance. Stindl from distance goes for the finesse. Oh, what a finesse it is as well. I just knew, I saw the space and I thought, you know what, let's go for it. And uh, wow, 6-3. Truly not a scoreline I expected after that first half. Well, there is the full-time whistle. We get ourselves a nice 6-3 victory. And uh, Stindall gets himself the match ball. Um, yeah, quite a display, especially in that second half. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with that performance, to be honest. Let's move on into another matchup. In the next game, we are actually up against that brand new play moment, the Santos, and um, this is actually quite a nice team. I like some of the unique links it is uh, actually using. Some of these players I rarely ever see in uh, people's ultimate teams. That wasn't sarcasm, by the way, about the Joe Gomez card. I haven't seen that Kamara, I haven't seen that the Santos, and I actually don't see Kleber all that much considering how good he is. Werner into the path of Stindl, who... Passes it out to Kerman. Here's an opportunity now. What can we do? We come on the inside, put the ball back in, and uh, wow. Gripska into the path of Stindl. Stindl puts a nice ball out wide for Leon Bailey, who puts the ball across the box. There's a chance, and Volland finishes it brilliantly as well. That was a really good team move to get us the equaliser. Ball's put it up. Stindl gets the knock on header, but unfortunately, Volland doesn't quite have the pace to really challenge for that. Stindl, who does dribble past Pogba here. Not the most you know, convincing of dribble, but he got the job done nonetheless. And now a bit of link-up play with Timo Werner. Can we get that pass through? We can. Timo Werner with a chance, and that should be, should be hitting the back of the net. Well, thanks to a goal just before half-time, we head in at the break with a nice 2-1 lead. We're going to make the same changes we did in the first game, uh, where we're going to switch to the 4-2-3-1 formation, just because I felt like it worked in the previous game. So let's do exactly that, and we will go forth in the second half like this. Nice touch there by Stindl to get the ball through. Now there is an opportunity to counter-attack because of that. Stindl does well to keep the ball and puts the ball nicely through for Mbappe, who's trying to create some space for himself. And he does really well to do exactly that. Leon Bailey puts the ball across the box. Chance for Mbappe, and we do get our lead back. Interesting. Very interesting attack. Stindl almost getting on the end of it as well. This is a really strange attack, and Stindl actually does make it 4-2. Okay, so another game, another win, and another decent performance from Stindl. Yeah, he does lack pace, but um, his technical stats are very good, and his passing ability in-game has been very good for me so far. Okay, so first of all, sorry for the laggy clips towards the end there. I can't do anything about it now, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully it was watchable nonetheless. Anyway, let's get into the review portion of this video. How was a player of the month, Stindl? Um, to be fair, better than expected. Now, a lot of people are going to look at this card, look at the pace, and just be like, no, I'm not going to touch it. But to be honest, I thought this card was quite fun. It was, uh, yeah, it's a decent item, and it definitely does have some notable positives. Obviously, there are a couple of outstanding negatives as well, but uh, we will cover those. But I definitely don't think this card is as bad as some people uh, think it is. They're just so off-put by the pace. But if you can handle the lack of pace, I think you actually have a decent item right here because the technical stats are really, really nice. So let's start with the obvious, the pace. It's not great. But it's not terrible either. I've put it in a negative section for obvious reasons compared to, you know, the top tier cams. He isn't that quick. But I didn't think his pace was awful. Obviously, the catalyst cam style helped out with that. But uh, he certainly wasn't slow. And if you watch the footage, you'll have seen that. I thought a bigger problem with this card was the agility. Because obviously, on the turn, he uh, isn't that fluid. And with him playing a cam roll where he's going to be getting the ball a lot, that's a bigger issue. So I'd say the agility is more of a problem than the pace. Now, when it comes to his positives, there's plenty of them. I thought his shooting for a midfielder was brilliant like really really good his finishing's nice and um, his shot power is very good and his long shots and ability to score from distance is also definitely there and he's also got good composure as well the guy certainly scores goals and for a mid as i say very very good at doing exactly that he's not quick enough to play a striker role unfortunately but uh the guy will chip in with a few goals here and there if you do indeed use him another thing that i was really happy with this card was the positioning look he's not super quick so he's not like brilliant or like, oh, like quick to make those runs but when he does make runs he makes very good ones and very effective ones and once again if you watch the footage you will have seen that the passing as a whole I thought was solid and um, I like the short passing a lot and the through balls weren't too bad 
either, but it was mainly the short pass and the link-up play that uh, benefited me with this guy. It was just quick short passes that uh, got him going. Now we come on to the dribbling, which, like I've already touched on, the agility does hold him back a bit. He's not too easy to manoeuvre, but he does have nice ball control, and he can protect the ball rather well as well, which is nice. He actually is okay at hold-up play. And that brings us on to his physical stats, which is another area of his game which was good. Not great, but good. Um, stamina is all right it's good enough to last 90 minutes but if i was going to into extra time i probably would look to sub him off but he does have a nice combination of strength and aggression which allows him to uh, protect the ball here and there which is obviously very very nice so uh all in all i think this is a decent card and i don't think 50k is you know terrible value for this item at all am i gonna say go out and get this card no not really but if you're wrong with a bundesliga team and you want to try out a different kind of cam then i give this guy a go because as i say his technical stats are quite nice but uh, obviously his pace does hold him back I mean, the overall verdict is pretty obvious um, I mean you can read it if you wish uh, but pretty much I think this is a card that you could get away with in rivals but I think in champs against like the proper sweat meta teams he's just not going to get too much of the ball he's just going to get closed down too quickly but um, you could have some fun with his cards in maybe the objective game modes and they're also rivals as well but um, as I said I just wouldn't really advise for champs he just hasn't got the pace or the agility for it in my opinion anyway guys those are my thoughts on player of the month Stindle literally a game breaking card well he was when he was first released anyway but um also a nice little novelty um cam as well as i said technically i think he's very good i just wish he had you know a major pace boost anyway i'm rambling let's wrap this video up hope you enjoyed it if you have drop a like on it subscribe if you're new thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one